Robert Morris men's hockey team took another step toward an Atlantic Hockey Championship this past weekend, sweeping Niagara in a best of three Atlantic Hockey quarterfinal series. I'm Matt Geica from RMU Sports Information. Time for this week's update with head coach Derek Schooley. And coach, uh, college hockey, always exciting, always intense, but it went to a whole nother level this past weekend against Niagara. As a coach, do you ever get a chance to take it all in and say, wow, you know, I'm trying to win this game as best I can, but this is a terrific hockey game we're involved in right now? Well, yeah, you look, you look at games and, and go that, they're, that they are good games and that teams are going up and down, back and forth. I thought we came out with a tremendous amount of energy. I thought we were focused. We were ready from the start. We played hard. Uh, we put a lot of pucks on net. We did everything we wanted to do in the first period coming off a of bye, but we're trailing 2-1. It made zero sense. But uh, our guys stuck with it. They stuck with the process and got the tire. And then uh, I think Niagara was a little tired in the third period. And, and uh, we kind of took it from there in the third period of game one. In particular, that second game, up and down, twists and turns, I guess everything you'd want to see as a fan's perspective in, uh, in a playoff hockey game. But from your team's perspective, you said your team experienced a dip in the second period. But how encouraging was it to see that tremendous response in the third? Well, I thought we had another really good first period, and I think uh, we took the foot off the, the gas in the third period, or the second period. Um, I thought we thought we had a tired hockey team, a tired team that was done, and uh, we let them back in the hockey game. And uh, they're a proud hockey team, they're a well-coached hockey team, and they're, they've, they're a championship hockey team. They've been to the Atlantic Hockey uh, Final Four three of the last four years now. So. Uh, they came back strong and uh, they got us to amp our game back up. We got into intermission, we refocused and we're ready to go and had a, a really good third period with creating chances. I mean, I thought uh, before we even, uh, you know, scored the, the fifth one, I thought we had a couple of chances. It could have been a lot worse. I thought Tyke Rub was uh, good in the nets both games and uh, we put a lot of pucks on net and he made, forced him to make a lot of saves. In that second game, special teams were enormous. Two power play goals, you convert on both ends of that two-man advantage late in the first to take a 3-1 lead. Five for five in the game on the PK, and Zach Lynch gets that crucial shorthanded goal to put you ahead for good. Do you find this time of year that, that special teams are even more important because teams are just in general closer in terms of quality? Absolutely. A big thing in, in playoff hockey is special teams and goaltending. And uh, our special teams was... Uh, uh, very good. We got the five on three goal, then right back after it got the five on four. We killed some penalties, got a shorty, and uh, we really kept the momentum of the hockey game going. Um, big penalty kills sometimes can provide momentum, and you know, we, we took the momentum off our penalty kills, but we also uh, took the uh, momentum from them by scoring on those goals. So there's uh, special teams, goaltending, playoff hockey's big as are the intangibles, blocking shots, finishing checks, and we did a tremendous job in blocking shots. I think the one game we blocked 30, which is a season high for us, and shows a lot about our determination and our will and our want in, that, in the series. Last year on your way to Rochester, where you will return this year, you played a couple of best of three series. The first one here against Army went three. The second one, you are able to close it out in two at UConn. Can you speak to the significance of closing it out in two this time and making sure that you're as fresh as you can be, I suppose, this time of the year going into the semifinal? Well, last year just seemed so long, playing three games the first round, having travel out to UConn, travel back, then back to Rochester. And this year feels like a breath of fresh air. I mean, we had to get two wins at home. We didn't have to leave our beds uh, where we had to leave our beds a lot last year. Now we're going to go to Rochester two wins away from going back to the NCAA tournament. And um, I'm sure the other three teams are looking at it the same way. They're two wins away from going. And now we're playing single elimination games from here on out. The rest of the way, no matter what we play, it's if you lose, you're out. So it's, uh, it's important to, to continue doing the same things we've been doing. Good starts, putting pucks on nets, physical, blocking shots, playing with energy. And this, as I said last week, this is an older, mature group. I think they understand what it takes. I think uh, I was really proud of the way we came out. We played five really good periods, and we took the one off, which is expected sometimes. I wish we wouldn't have, but uh, this is a team that's, that, that, that's ready, and they know, knows what it has to do. The stakes couldn't be higher this weekend, folks. The Colonials will face their Keystone State rivals in Mercyhurst in the first semifinal at Blue Cross Arena in Rochester, New York. That'll be at 5 o'clock. Mercyhurst, the team you saw right at the end of the fall semester, a couple of games 
up in Erie, PA. You win 7-4 to four the first night in a pretty wild affair there. And then a 3 nothing loss on Saturday, but I remember us talking after that game, and you said you liked a lot of what your team did there. So based on those games and what you know about Mercyhurst, what can we expect from Friday's contest? Well, they're a proud hockey team. They've been to the, the Atlantic Hockey Final Four numerous times. The one thing about this tournament is there's a lot of tradition of winning championships here. Uh, we went last year. Canisius went the year before. RIT went uh, two years before that when they went to the Frozen Four. Mercyhurst's gone a couple of times. They've been there a couple of times. I mean, it's a, it's a group that, that has experienced Rochester, knows what to expect. But Mercyhurst, uh, the, the, the weekend we had, we were, first game was kind of wide open, run and gun. Uh, the second game was more tight check, and we played really good. We outshot them, I think, 42 to 18-19, uh, but we couldn't put a puck past Jimmy Sargent. And uh, that was unfortunately the problem with that game. And hopefully, uh, we're able to capitalize on some of our chances and play just as well as we did uh, in Erie in December. Comes down to one game. On the other side of the Atlantic Hockey bracket, you have second seed Canisius and third seed RIT. So as you mentioned, all strong programs. Uh, it should be a, a tremendous weekend of hockey. We hope you can join us in person. If not, you can listen on 970 ESPN or watch at AtlanticHockey.tv. Coach, best of luck this weekend. Thank you. We'll talk to you again, I'm sure. For now, follow the Colonials on rmucolonials.com.